we rejoin my travels, leaving the busy roads that surround Whitchurch behind and moving into a more rural landscape again. And first up is Hassel's number one lift bridge. As I take Reverie from Whitchurch to Prees Junction, I encounter a profusion of lift bridges. You'll find out what I left Cool Pilot with. I am on the menu for mosquitoes, midges and horseflies. I cross the border, albeit briefly. And just who were the Wixel Moss Gang? It's still pretty windy approaching Hassel's number two lift bridge. Oh, I see the lift bridge ferry is at it again, but more on that a bit later. I follow her through and close the bridge. The winding gear for lift bridges is on the offside, not on the towpath side. This means that for a solo boater, you need to tie to the single mushrooms on the offside. If you tie up on the towpath side, you won't be able to access your boat once the bridge is open. Despite the wind, it's a really hot day. Judging by the floating tyres, narrowboat Maple might be expecting some careless boaters.
This is such a green canal, so tranquil. Tranquility broken. So you've made a friend then? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and altogether more placid dog. I recognise that boat. Excuse me, is that your vehicle, madam? Now there appears to be some speculation as to what I left Cool Pilot with that I didn't have when I arrived there. Well, I am finally leaving Cool Pilot. I've been here seven and a half weeks now um, and to be honest there's never been a dull moment I've really enjoyed my time here um, usually I get itchy tiller after a couple of days but um, you know I have thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed my time here and to be honest I'm leaving here with something I didn't arrive with now some of you have noticed two gin glasses in the sunset for instance or a salmon and a gammon on the barbecue and the fact that I occasionally refer to we rather than me or I. And how did I do some of those shots whilst steering the boat? You have noticed the mysterious woman or lock and lift bridge fairy who magically appears and helps me through these obstacles. Oh, and of course, there's the recent addition of the dog in some of my vlogs. Well, in episode 27, I stated that I was lucky enough to be moored next to Cathy, a fender maker. What I didn't say, though, was just how lucky I really was. The dog that has started appearing is Cathy's dog, and he's called Chester, and there's also a cat called Kiki. Now, I have to admit, lockdown was really pretty good for me uh, and I would like to say a big big thank you to Dee and to Vicky uh, and to all the rest of you who made such great comments and kept us amused over the last few weeks. Just thanks very much for that, that was brilliant. Setting off, the wind has dropped and the sun is out, it's going to be a hot day. I've been moored just south of Bridge 42 over the last couple of days and it's fair to say I have been eaten alive by horseflies and other insects um, but it's a nice enough mooring so that's great. Mosquitoes and midges are prevalent here because of the proximity of the canal to Wixel Moss. And the weird thing is that um, I am now in Wales or at least half of me is probably in Wales the towpath side is it actually Wales, and the off side is actually England. Um, around about this point, the, the canal meanders in and out of Wales a couple of times. The border, as such, the border where um, boaters are being and cars are being stopped from going into Wales, is actually at uh, Chirk Aqueduct, which is 18 miles from here.
despite his name, the Llangollen Canal, you would expect quite a lot of it to be actually in Wales, but it's only the last eight miles between Chirk Aqueduct and Llangollen that are actually in Wales, and a couple of sort of short stretches around about where I am now. The canal is now traversing Wixell and Fen Mosses, the third largest bog in Britain. When the canal was built through here in 1807, drainage ditches were used to lower the water level of the bog by some four to five feet. That's up to about one and a half metres. That must have been an ecological disaster. Between 1804 and the 1960s, the canal here required constant maintenance, rebuilding the embankments. It was maintained by navvies, who were known as the Wixel Moss Gang. It sounds like something from a western, doesn't it? In the 1960s, metal piling was added to the canal to prevent slippage. Navvies, by the way, are labourers, usually itinerant workers, who built the early canals, or navigations, as they were known then. Hence the term, navvies. Over the years, the mosses have had many military uses. A rifle range was established here during the Boer War at the turn of the 20th century. Troops arrived at Bettersfield by train and marched along the towpath presumably in single file, to the ranges on Wixel Moss. The mosses are a site of scientific special interest and home to some of Britain's rarest insects and plants. It has an absolutely fascinating history and I'll be delving more into that as I continue the journey through the mosses in the next episode.